Even with a price increase, the Galaxy S24 Ultra proves its worth as one of the best phones, setting new records for a flagship phone in key areas such as battery life, screen brightness, and processing performance. Add to that the slew of helpful Galaxy AI features packaged with the phone, and it's a powerhouse that will actually save you on time. The Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra is here to try to reclaim the top spot among the best phones by offering things the iPhone 15 Pro Max lacks. This includes a ton of Galaxy AI features that can do everything from auto-summarizing your notes and moving subjects around in your photos to translating phone conversations in real time. I am a devout supporter of what AI can do with our phones and after using the Pixel 8 Pro's many AI assisted features, I think it's clear that AI is where we will see the next revelation with our mobile devices. Not surprisingly, the Galaxy S24 Ultra is marketing itself as the AI phone to beat in 2024. From its intuitive circle to search feature that can reveal what weed is growing in my backyard to chat assist which automatically picks a better tone for my messages, these Galaxy AI features aim to simplify my life. At the same time too, the Galaxy S24 Ultra's US$1299 asking price is $100 more than what you'd pay for a Galaxy S23 Ultra or iPhone 15 Pro Max. This also comes with the most controversial change to Samsung phone, teaching the 10x optical camera of its predecessor with a less powerful but sharper 50MP 5x telephoto lens. Usually, I expect longer telephoto ranges with successive devices, so Galaxy AI will need to prove that software can make up for the apparent lack of major hardware upgrades. In my Galaxy S24 Ultra review, I will dial into the practically of the phone's new Galaxy AI feature, assesses how its new cameras compare against its predecessor and rivals, find out how long its battery lasts, and ultimately determine if it's worth the money. Pre-orders for the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra are available right now with its general release date set for January 31. The US$1299 starting cost of the phone comes with 256GB of storage, while upgrading to the 512GB or 1TB models will cost US$1499 and US$1659 respectively. They're certainly not cheap, so it's not the most Samsung has ever charged for a non-folding phone. Remember, the Galaxy S20 Ultra launched at whooping US$1399 4 years ago. Still, that's probably little comfort to someone in the year, and now trying to justify paying $100 more for the Galaxy S24 Ultra over the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Samsung Galaxy S24 pre-order deals take some of the sting out of the Ultra's price, with Samsung offering an upgrade to the next tier of storages at no extra cost. You can also get credit from the Samsung by trading in your current device for a lower price on the S24 Ultra. Look quick and you might not notice the design changes Samsung made to the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Most notably, the new model ditches its predecessor's armor aluminum frame for a titanium one which bolsters durability and in this case leads to a lighter package as well. On paper, the Galaxy S24 Ultra's 8.22 ounce width doesn't seem like a tremendous difference over the S23 Ultra's 8.25 ounce weight, but the phone just feels less dense this time. Another change pertains to the end of an era for the series, its curved screen. I am on the fence about this change because the curved screen of past ultras gave the phone this sleek looking static. Instead, the S24 Ultra adopts a flat display that hugs the edge of the titanium frame. Samsung's reasoning for this change pertains to the S Pen, the flatter panel makes it less likely for the stylus to fall over the edge. But then again, I end up using a case with my older Carvia Galaxy S Ultra that prevents this such thing from happening. 
The last and subtle change involves 42% slimmer bezels according to Samsung's math. I only see it with the bottom portion at the display since the rest of the bezels appear very similar to the Galaxy S23 Ultra. One of the disappointments that will probably go under the radar is how there is no significant change to the S Pen. I was really hoping for Samsung to add something new to the fold here, seeing that the S Pen is one of the features that makes the Ultra distinctively different from everything else. Overall, I don't love or hate the design, but at least there are far more color options to choose from versus other phones, like the titanium violet version of my review unit. On top of that, there are several cases at launch that sprinkle more utility to the phone, like the preview window of the S View wallet case. Over the years, I have been less concerned about the resolution of a flagship's display, mainly because today's QHD Plus resolution is more than adequate. That's exactly what the Galaxy S24 Ultra is packing, a 6.8-inch QHD Plus Dynamic AMOLED 2X display that is rich in detail, offers outstanding viewing angles and vibrant colors that makes YouTube trailers like Furiosa jump out at me as I watch it. But of course, all that wouldn't mean much if the new doesn't beat its predecessor in the brightness department. Samsung's no different with the Galaxy S24 Ultra, which the company claims to have a rated brightness of 2600 nits. I am never one to believe the hype because these ratings often don't reflect their true to life behavior, which is why I place more emphasis on our actual testing. This is where it gets interesting because the Galaxy S23 Ultra reached a peak brightness output of 1225 nits in our display benchmark testing. It's an improvement to 1353 nits with the Galaxy S24 Ultra in our testing when displaying HDR content. That's fantastic and I didn't have any issue watching YouTube clips or playing my mobile games outside with direct sunlight beating down on me. Samsung kept the S24 Ultra's display refresh rate to 1 to 120 Hz, which is what I expect from a flagship today. Still, Samsung missed an opportunity to increase that refresh rate to perhaps 144 Hz to further differentiate itself. Without question, the biggest controversy circling the Galaxy S24 Ultra centers around Samsung's decision to ditch the 10x optical zoom camera of the S23 Ultra for a 5x optical one. That one key spec will cause people to think the new camera setup is technically inferior, but bear in mind that Samsung trades in the optical range for a higher resolution sensor, a 50 megapixel sensor instead of a 10 megapixel one to be specific. The Galaxy S24 Ultra remains a formidable camera phone consisting of a main 200 megapixel camera boosting 60% larger pixels, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 10 megapixel telephoto lens with a 3x optical zoom, and that new 50 megapixel telephoto camera with a 5x optical zoom we mentioned above. That camera can still offer 10x zooms by taking a picture and then zooming in as the resolution drops to 12 megapixel. Samsung says that this approach on the S24 Ultra can deliver the same optical quality performance as its predecessor, which doesn't surprise me. We have seen this executed on other phones with excellent zooming results like iPhone 15's 2x telephoto zoom. Before I detail the new telephoto camera and whether Samsung made the wrong decision, Decision, I will explain how the phone other cameras perform under different situations along with side-by-side -side comparisons against the S23 Ultra and iPhone 15 Pro Max. Starting with the main camera, I can't see much change over the S23 Ultra. Details are plentiful, colors are vivid, and the S24 Ultra's HDR performance does nicely to even out the highlights and shadows. I'm perfectly fine with these results, but in the back of my mind, I was hoping for a wider separation from last year's model. Compared to the iPhone 15 Pro Max, it comes down to personal preference. In the short of the outside auto forum, the iPhone's HDR performance is at peak display when I look how the wooden panels of the front doors pop up out more. The S24 Ultra also appears to have a colder color temperature as well. Here are some camera samples and you can see it.
There is a lot to say about how Samsung's approach to artificial intelligence with the Galaxy S24 Ultra. From my experience, the Galaxy AI capabilities are fairly intuitive to use and save me a lot of time exactly what AI is supposed to do for us. Features such as circle to search, generative edit, instant slow-mo, and note assist all feel polished, while others such as live translate could benefit from more machine learning. Regardless, the Galaxy S24 Ultra proves that AI is here for the long haul. Yet, I am a little disappointed that the Galaxy S24 Ultra camera performance doesn't have the same dramatic improvement I have seen from past updates. Samsung's choice to drop the 10x optical camera for a 5x1 is the most glaring and controversial change. A downgrade I hope doesn't happen ever again. But despite this, the S24 Ultra has smart improvements to its processing power and battery life, two key areas I look at with any phone. The Galaxy S24 Ultra is not just a better, it sets the benchmark for all other phone releases in 2024. Knowing that, the increase in price to US$1299 does complicate matters a bit, given that I feel the majority of its AI features are practical, combined with its performance and battery gains, it's still worth getting the Galaxy S24 Ultra if you are in the market for a super phone or upgrading from a handset that's a few years older. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.